another another common one that people uh, talk about is, is vitamin C and other nutrients and so forth. Um, you talk about uh, this in a couple of your your talks, and you spoke with me about the last time we spoke. But can you tell us a bit a bit about you know vitamin C, why we don't actually uh, need it in the numbers that uh, are quoted if you're eating carnivore diet, not a mixed diet, and and its relationship with uh, oxalates, which which is a, is a bit of a buzzword. People are starting to understand in the carnivore community uh, what the hell this stuff is and why it's it's harmful. But please, professor. Yeah, you bet. Um, basically. This idea that we need a certain amount of vitamin C baseline to prevent a condition called scurvy is correct. We do need a certain amount of vitamin C, which we do need to take in in our diet to prevent scurvy. And scurvy is a failure of the synthesis of the most common protein in your body. It's called collagen. So if you get scurvy, basically your body starts to dissolve, you get bleeding gums, your teeth start falling out, you your joints will fall to bits, your muscles will start to dissolve. It can be fatal, obviously. Scurvy was a genuine, uh, generally experienced by sailors who went to sea for months at a time and subsisted on a diet of purely ship's biscuits, actually, and, and weevils that, that came with those biscuits. Mm. And, and, and those people developed scurvy, absolutely. So that's that's how we learned originally that scurvy was a thing and it could kill you and that therefore we needed a certain amount of, of vitamin C in our diet. So that is correct. Okay. Many animals, most animals, are able to synthesize their own vitamin C. And they do so and that's fine. There are several animals that for some reason are not able to synthesize any vitamin C at all. And the two examples I know about off the top of my head are human beings and for some random reason, guinea pigs, whatever. Okay. Now that tells us something. Anytime a genetic line of animals that came from the parent line of whatever the animals were, so obviously the, the parent mammal that was a, uh, a descendant of both us and guinea pigs, for example, or well, guinea pigs were probably earlier on actually, and then the human developed a bit later after the primate situation we used to eat a lot of fruit which contains vitamin c anyway we also used to be able to make our own vitamin c fine whatever the fact that we now can't tells us that the gene that encodes or the enzyme required to synthesize our own vitamin c in our metabolic system that gene has been knocked out now, a knockout of a gene means necessarily by Darwinian, I'm not going to say theory, Darwinian fact. Mm -hmm. If a gene is knocked out, it's because that gene was a problem that prevented animals of that species from living long enough to reach childbearing age to pass those genes on. Only human beings that could not produce vitamin C have survived to this day. There are no living human beings that can do it. Mm. When did it happen? Soon after we came down from the trees, stopped eating so much fruit, stood upright and started chasing animals around and eating those. Yeah. The reason for it, I believe this is a theory, my theory, not science, not a fact, not proven. This is a theory is because excess vitamin C in your system is metabolized through a series of steps down to oxalate, which you mentioned. Oxalate is a substance that will precipitate out with calcium and other um, cations, if you like, in your electrolytes in your body, mainly calcium, and it forms shard-like, needle-like crystals in your body, which... Um, will pierce your organs, pierce your cells. Ox uh, calcium oxalate crystals usually form in the, in the kidneys, but they can form anywhere in the body, including in your eyeballs. Oh, mm. God. Or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Um, or in the brain, for example, or, you know, in the bladder or, you know, anywhere, absolutely anywhere, these things. And, and they're literally, if you look at them under a microscope, they are literally like crystalline sharp needles these are nasty nasty things and 
And I think that's what the problem was. Mm-hmm. Now, the reason we suddenly had so much excess vitamin C when we stopped eating a bunch of fruit was this. The protein transporter, the, the transmembrane transporter on the, on the cell membrane of every cell in your body, which is responsible for uptaking vitamin C from your blood and, and getting it into the cell where it does its work in the cell and helping you form collagen, for example, that transporter is a transporter called GLUT4, which anyone who knows anything about nutrition and physiology will tell you that's the one that transports glucose into your cells out of your blood, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's the same one. And in fact, vitamin C and glucose are quite similar molecules. Ergo, that's why the transporter is the same one. If you've got a bunch of glucose in your bloodstream, it's competing for space through that transporter in a concentration gradient dependent manner to get into the cells. And it's blocking most of the vitamin C from exiting your blood and going into your cells. That's why most of the vitamin C you take ends up getting urinated out because your cells can't uptake it if you're consuming a whole bunch of glucose or any carbohydrates, which all break down to glucose pretty much. So the recommended daily intake of vitamin C to prevent scurvy is made under the assumption that you are eating a mixed macronutrient diet containing 60 to 65% carbohydrates. Ergo, the amount of vitamin C that you require in your blood to have a concentration that will push its way through into the cells on that transporter is vastly higher. So we stop eating fruit, we come down from the trees, we start eating meat instead. We don't have glucose in our blood so much anymore. We're relying on gluconeogenesis to provide us with a much lower level of glucose than we had when we were eating a bunch of fruit. Suddenly we've got a whole excess of vitamin C in our systems. It's building up into calcium oxalate crystals and killing us, our mates, before we can reach reproductive age and pass that gene on. Ergo, it's gone. Hmm. Human beings cannot make their own vitamin C for that reason. Simple as that. Also, interestingly, you will find in most leafy green plants that those plants contain a large amount of oxalate inherently in their stems and leaves and roots and whatever else. That is there precisely to kill you Hmm. so that you don't eat the plants. That's why it's there. That's why the plants have evolved that. It won't kill you instantly because you're a human being and you're quite tough in that regard. It'll kill you slowly over a lifetime. A lifetime it'll be a lot shorter if you eat plants than it would if you didn't, by the way. But if you're an insect and you're eating a lot of oxalates, that'll kill you just about instantly. Mm. Insects are very, very sim- you know, and insects are the animals that eat more plants than anything else. Yeah. So it all seems to sum up my theory. None of that's proven science or experimental science. That's my theory based on observation of all the facts at hand, looking at the whole picture. Yeah. So that's the take on vitamin C. Yes, you need a small amount of vitamin C in your diet. Where do you get it? You get it from the meat of large ruminant animals, mostly, because they have an amount in there. And it's enough at the much lower concentrations required in carnivorous human beings to provide all the vitamin C. You don't even have to eat, you know, organs to get enough vitamin C. Mm. There's enough in muscle meat. Yeah. I don't eat any organs at all. And I haven't done for six and a half years. No scurvy yet. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe living gums. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, um, yeah, well, as again, you know, getting, getting the first principles, they say, well, you're going to die of scurvy and yet I haven't. And yet you have it. And yet the Inuits don't, and they live generationally like this. You know, and, and right, so I, I was, hypothesis is dismissed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, I always, I, I, I refer to the Inuits quite often and, you know, the people during the ice ages, because obviously there are other uh, native examples of, of, of people's living as purely carnivores, especially historically up until, you know, the, the encroachment of the West in, in various countries like, um, you know, North America and uh, Australia and so forth, uh, New Zealand. But, um, you know, we have, we have clear documents going hundreds of years backwards saying that, wow, these guys really just eat meat. All the, the explorers, journals, and uh, publications that I've read you know, from the 1600s you know, and so forth, 1500s, 1600s, so forth, in Australia and America, 
every single one has a chapter on the diet of the natives and they're just marveling how they just eat meat and so forth and how you know even even in the northern areas uh there's one in uh who's a colonist in in uh, new england he was talking about the the northern uh natives uh living in canada what's now canada saying that he was he was amazed these guys only ate meat all year round uh they're very very healthy and he said that he understood what during during uh, nine months out of the year when everything's just packed with snow, you really can't grow anything. You can't, you know, live off the land. But uh, and so you understand that you could you just hunt. But he said three months out of the year when everything thaws down, surely they could live off the bounty of the land. Is his words, which I always liked. And they don't. And he said specifically they don't. He said they only eat meat, and he was quite amazed by this. But everyone likes to say, yeah, well, they actually did. And this and the other. they have no proof of this. There's no evidence asked for or provided, but that's just their assumption. But if you go to the North Pole, that just shuts that down because there are no damn plants up there. You know, they're not, they're not eating kelp. They're just not. They probably can't get it. The ocean's too deep there. Um, so we know these guys when living naturally, we're, we're strict, strict, strict carnivores and also we know from various polar explorers that they weren't eating organs either they don't get scurvy so we know this is wrong we just know it's wrong um it was you know, interesting about the, the sailors biscuits um there uh was some accounts from some polar explorers that i was reading and most most of the successful ones anyway uh looked at what the natives were doing and lived that way basically lived on purely meat alone. And they all went like, wow, I've never felt better in my life. This is, um, you know, uh, Professor uh, Stefanson from Harvard was a, was a professor of ethnology and, you know, wrote the book, uh, The Fat of the Lamb, which people know about usually. Um, and he, he felt absolutely amazing because of this. But there are different, different accounts of people not doing very well and getting very, very sick and having horrible problems. And they're trying to figure out what's going on, what's wrong with them. And then they found in their pack, a bunch of sailors biscuits guy just wasn't about it he's like no 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 can't live like that need these sailors biscuits these guys are getting serious uh nutritional deficiencies and as soon as they just they just took them all they did was take away the biscuits and he, and he improved so this, this is pretty indicative that these biscuits were causing harm in one manner or another by either direct or uh referred from from blocking uh, various nutrients that he needed um but yeah, but this is this is this is real life evidence of these sorts of things, um, and uh, so yeah, so I, I just think that's uh, that's that's interesting. Yeah, just interesting to know about biochemically, but also yes. just you know need to. Sorry, yeah, go on. Yes, just on that as well, the the mm. fat of the land thing. Mm. Um, the sailors that were getting scurvy eating ship's biscuits. Yes, the officers on the same ship were eating dried meat, right. not ship's biscuits, no scurvy. Only right. the sailors, only the men below decks were getting the scurvy. Interesting. Yeah. I don't see in the meat, even though it's dried. Secondly, on fat of the land, um, it has been made by a bunch of carnivore influences over time into a bit of an audio book because it's out of print and, you know, you can't buy the thing anymore, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And it's been read by a number of carnivore influencers as an audio book. Hmm. One of the chapters is read by yours truly. Nice. And it's the one on vitamin C. Nice. Very good. You can find that on my channel. I, I, I will you actually. That'd be cool. Yeah. Channel for the fat of the land and you'll find the, 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 the chapter on vitamin C is voiced it was truly in these dulcet terms. Very good. Yeah. All right. Um...